And we are live. G'day Crypto Goers. I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel for the Crypto Sunday Summary. This being a very difficult week indeed. This is the 13th of November 2022, where it's always a free and easy way of supporting this work is by simply hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, ensuring you also hit that notification bell so you never miss a new episode. I'm just muting uh, other audio coming through in the background. Dean Krakowski, good to see you, my crypto brother. It's been a very interesting week. I put out a little poll just beforehand by popular demand. Many people were saying, can you please go live tonight instead of doing a pre-recorded? It helps me a lot because then I don't have to do the editing. Uh, just so you know what I do pre-recorded, it's just what you see is what you get. When I do a pre-recorded, sorry, live is what you see is what you get. Pre-recorded takes about three to four hours to do the timestamps, the thumbnail, the recording, the editing, and so forth. That aside, let's check out who we've got here. Steph's given me a five by five. Thank you, my crypto brother, Al King. G'day, Ewan Grant. G'day, Ewan. Uh, one of your suggestions, uh, one of the people who suggested that we go live tonight. Chris is giving me a five by five. Globetrotter has asked me if I spoke to Jack Levin. Yes, to get that straight out of the way. Yes, I have. I have spoken to Jack Levin. Um, I offered him to go on the show. He said, yes, I just have to make it happen. There's just so much happening. G'day, Troy. Good to see you here. Carl Yates. Meme, hey up, is in the house. Godfather J6 Ash C 1992. Uh, the room is filling up quickly whilst we continue to fill up the room. There's a lot to talk about tonight. We've uh, obviously going through a very rough week, and I'm just going to cut straight to the chase. What's happening in crypto is what's happening in the traditional financial sector. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. What we've hap had, what we've seen happen in the traditional financial sector over the last 200 years is happening within 200 months in crypto. And I would argue what is happening right now, we have caught up so quickly. We are in the traditional timeline. We are just coming into the 2008 global financial crisis. That's where we are right now. Because crypto moves so quickly and we've got this combination of so much technology, you've got the good, the bad, the ugly. You've got all the scams, the rug pulls, the manipulation, the fake money, the real money, those who are trusted, those who can't be trusted. That has happened in the traditional financial system, system rather over the last 200 years. It is now happening within 200 months in crypto and we've just reached, in my opinion, the 2008 global financial crisis. Why? Because what's happened with Sam bankrupt fraud, uh, my apologies, Sam Bankman Freed, is that some have said he's the Lehman Brothers, and I really see how that's happened. So the Lehman Brothers, let's go back in uh, traditional uh, history, if you will, financial history. In 2008, Lehman Brothers went down, and it wasn't just Lehman Brothers, it was lots of banks that went down because they were all cross-collateralized, and basically they were lending out money they didn't have to people who couldn't afford to pay those loans. Whilst this is very different in the sense that it's not so much buying properties, it is, in fact, an example of cross-collateralization, which is a fun word to say, where people are saying that they've got money that they never really had. It's also an example of a type of fiat in the sense that a lot of the FTT token and the cross-collateralized tokens, they were just made up money. It's like, yeah, we've got this money. So we'll get this other company that begins with A. And I'm not sure if I can even say the company because it might. Can you write it in the comments just in case I get triggered for some algorithm? Because things are getting very sensitive out here. I can't really keep up with why some things can be said on YouTube and other things can't. Maybe it's because um, SBF was a big sponsor of the Democratic Party. Does it affect what happens on YouTube? I don't know. Can I speak freely on YouTube? No. Can one spot side speak more freely than the other? <laughs> yes. It's all actually linked. I've, I've been researching the crap out of this. And if you watch my video that I released pretty much when it was all happening, I was telling you, it just didn't make sense. So much of what was happening didn't make sense. And the more we look into it, the more we can see that this is dodgy. It is so dodgy. It's beyond it's beyond a three arrows capital or a Celsius, Celsius or a BitConnect. Those ones, as I mentioned in my video a few days ago, they kind of felt right, not good, but right. So therefore, it was natural that those things happened. In this one, it feels neither right nor good. It feels, it just, everything feels wrong about it. It feels wrong about it in the sense that, the, first of all, Sam Bankman Fried was so adopted, so adored by the mainstream media, and he was so young and so new to crypto. It, it, the age doesn't really matter that much because we've seen a lot of young billionaires made over time, but 
he was relatively young in crypto. He was new to crypto. And yet here he was speaking on behalf of all of us, or at least it was perceived that way to the mainstream media, plugging a message that most of us didn't really support. We didn't agree with it. Meanwhile, he's sponsoring to a huge political campaign, which is just weird in itself. Then what I've actually discovered in, in my research over the last, well, four or five days, but it feels like four or five months because there's so much coming to light, is that he took on his rival, which was Binance, and we've heard about this before. But what was it? I found another piece to the puzzle, uh, which could be a piece to the puzzle or it could just be some noise on the outside, but it kind of made sense to me. When Sam Bankman-Fried was writing articles or promoting the the uh, writing of articles against Binance and CZ, as I understand it, cannot substantiate it, so I can't say this is fact, but as I understand it, there were some articles that attacked CZ's children. And I'm like, okay, now the stuff is starting to make sense. It's one thing to take on a guy or a leader or someone, but once you start taking on his kids, watch out. There's big trouble. If you're a father, you understand that. You mess with someone's kids and figuratively, figuratively, they'll be lucky if they ever find your body. Now, when I heard what happened with Sam Bankman Freed initially um, attacking, so to speak, I've got to be careful what I say here. I'm, I'm trying to choose my words carefully. When I heard about him attacking Binance and saying bad things about Binance and having articles written against Binance and CZ, when I heard the piece about his children, well, you know, you mess with a man's kids, look what happens. Was that the reason? Don't know. But to me, there's so many things that, that they just don't add up. And clearly, there's two sides to this. One side is that you had a, a company, FTT, or sorry, that, that's a token. FTX is a platform. FTT is a token. They were arguably operating in market failure. They were taking people's funds and they're doing the wrong thing with those funds. And those funds disappeared. And then once there was rumor of this, you know, they didn't have money. And then CZ publicly said, I'm dumping all of this position. Meanwhile, you had other crypto commentators saying, get your money out of FTX immediately. There was essentially a run on the banks. So on one side, it was just mathematically market failure. You had public knowledge of a huge holder of this token dumping their position. You had other commentators saying, get your money out of the platform right now. So that does a run on the bank banks. And then the third part of it is you actually had a platform that was arguably or evidently, I should say, insolvent because, you know, where's the money and why are they blocking the, the withdrawals right now? Then you go on to the human side. What's the human side of this? Well, numbers aside, the human side is there was rivalry or bad blood or friction between two big players, CZ and SBF. These two big players evidently had some friction amongst themselves or between one another. And one of them won and one of them lost. We then go over to what happened in the global financial crisis of 2008 and how this is linked to what's happening at the moment. We can see that, in fact, there was so much cross collateralization, which again is a fun word to say, where people were saying, oh, we've got this money on the books, but it's actually this money, which is this token, which is on that platform, which is linked with this one, which is cross collateralized with that one. The money never existed. And then when essentially the tide went out, we could see that who was standing there without any swimming trunks on. And it's all been exposed. The, the good news is, you know, I could talk about what was bad about this all the time, all, all night. We could talk about those who were wrecked, those who were destroyed, the, the reputation of the cryptocurrency um, community and economy. But the good thing is we want these we want these scumbags to fail and we want them out of the community. And it's going to hurt. It's like ripping off a Band-Aid. It's happened quickly, but it's done now. They're out. And if this guy is arrested, fantastic. You know, I mean, Luna is another one. So you've got authorities chasing after Do Kwon, which was another saga that really hurt the cryptocurrency space, but not as much as this one. Why? Because that, that wasn't an exchange and you didn't have the leader of that company sponsoring government parties and doing a lot of talk on behalf of the crypto community it was still big but it wasn't as big as this one you also had celsius which was very big because a lot of people got wrecked but it, it actually wasn't as big as this one then you go back to bitconnect that was in the last cycle that was really big but we were all much smaller back then the market caps were smaller not that so many people were involved it was only one platform 
and it hurt, but it wasn't as big as this one. This one, this is where you had toxicity, argu arguably, evidently, in an opinion. Now, I think, I, in my opinion, you had a toxic player in this space. You had a rich kid who was abusing his position, sponsoring political parties, allegedly, uh, picking on the children of uh, the leader of another platform, the biggest platform, allegedly. You had insolvency, evidently, and you had cross-collateralization with companies that were saying, oh, no, we're good for it. And some of these companies were market makers. One big thing that I've got out of this is, you know, market makers, they're toxic as well because a market, a market should be a natural event. You know, it should be like out in nature. Will a tree grow here? Will water flow down that river? We'll let nature decide. When you have market makers, it's kind of making fake markets to make something that looks like it has value to uh, bring other investors into it. Now, on one hand, you've just got a Ponzi scheme. This thing, this snake oil or this, this stock, this bond, this commodity, you invest in it and you're going to get money out of it. The free market, if they decide that that thing actually has value, that creates its own market where it does something quite well. But when you have this third party, a market maker, where they do fake buys and sells, so they actually start, they get this box, as SBF has said. He gets this box. These are his words. He did this in an interview ages ago. He goes, basically, let's say we've got this box. And then people perceive that this box has value because they can see that people are doing buys and sells and the box is going up in value. Then that creates more people to come and invest in this box. And arguably, that's what FTT was. And some of the coins that were listed on FTX were, they were these these boxes with nothing in it that people were buying into. Now, of course, many could extrapolate and say, well, hang on, that's the entire crypto market. All of it is a Ponzi scheme because everyone's just putting money into it. Look, you could argue gold is a Ponzi scheme. Uh, really, I legitimately say that. There is no such thing as intrinsic value. No such thing as intrinsic value. Because if you go to someone who's in the desert and they're really thirsty and they're about to die, and you said you want a block of gold or a a bottle of water, well, what are they going to take? They're going to take the bottle of water. But if you go to a palace and there's waterfalls everywhere and they don't need any water, but they'd like some more gold, well, which one are they going to take? My point is when it comes to value, it is all subjective. And when we look at Bitcoin as an example, you could say, oh, it's all subjective, but Bitcoin is more than just a box. It's actually a global payment rail with the most secure system behind it that backs it. And then if you go to Ethereum to keep all things equal, what, what is Ethereum? Well, it's not just a box. It's something that you can build on and do stuff with. But when you look at what was happening in the FTT space and the market makers behind it and what was being put on the FTX platforms, they were these boxes that Sam said himself. He said it in his interviews with Mainstream. These are these boxes that we've made. We've had market makers put value in the, on the background and people have started to buy into it. Then they start taking that money and doing something with it. I don't know that we've got to figure out what they're doing with it. Where is the money? You know, we're not talking a whole of a few million dollars here. We're talking a whole of a few billion dollars. Where's the money, Sam? Where is the money? Now, this is why bringing the positive light onto this, we, we want this guy to fail. We want him to fail early, fast and hard. And although it hurts many of us, if you stuck to the rules of investing or using crypto, You've only ever invested what you can afford to lose and you haven't left your money on exchanges. And if you've stuck by those rules, you're actually okay. Now, for myself, I've never recommended this platform. I've never had anything to do with it. Um, and I, I checked, I don't even have any FTT tokens. So I was I, I was completely unharmed by this, except for my, my portfolio. All of it has gone down, but I haven't sold anything. And we've seen this before. What I have done, so I bought the crap out of this dip. So keeping things positive, we've got a bad player out of the space. I've bought a lot of the dip. And if it goes down further, I don't care because I'm dollar cost averaging. And some of you out there, I'm so proud of you. Some of my subs, some of my viewers and followers, if you will, you know, you've approached me and you said, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay because I, A, I wasn't using this platform because you didn't recommend it or B, if you were using it, you didn't have any more than 20% in it. And C, most of you were pulling all your money off this exchange platform, these exchanges anyway. But beyond that, you're used to this now in crypto. One of you out there, you said you've been in crypto for just a year. And I'm thinking, 
wow, this is one hell of a year to come into it because you've experienced so much. I often talk about the 2017 cycle and how brutal it was back then. I think it's fair to say that this one's probably, is it worse? It's bad. I don't know. 2017 was a different type of worse. It was, it, it was so brutal because there was so little exposure in mainstream that Anytime anyone was getting smashed, there was no regulators coming in and talking about it. It was just like, oh, well, the whole thing's a Ponzi scheme. There was no, there's no crypto commentators as such that would really had the maturity or industry experience because it was kind of new to all of us. And even if you say, well, hang on, Adam, crypto was around since 2009. Yeah, but there wasn't that many people in it. And YouTube wasn't really a thing or really reporting on it, even if it was a thing. It was really 2016 and 17. It came into its own the 2017 cycle was really brutal because of all the basically the fake icos this is going to be the new bitcoin invest in this this is going to be the new and better ethereum invest in this then you came onto this cycle and it was kind of nfts that uh, they weren't a scam nfts still work but there was a few more rug pulls but what's really happening this cycle is that the big centralized bodies they are coming and making a mess of it so i was on channel 7's ausbiz uh, on tuesday and the the uh, interviewer, you know, he, he was pretty hard. And it was I didn't take it personal. I was, to, to be honest, I was actually surprised how cool, calm and collected I was with it. Because it just, it doesn't phase me anymore. It's like water off a duck's back to me now. Now, it's just because, I, I guess I'm just crypto battle hardened. And many of you are as well. You've seen it before. This too, this too shall pass. Pass. You've been through this. You've experienced these crazy ups and downs. But... On Channel 7's Ausbiz this week when they were really putting the hard word on me and they're saying, well, you know, is this the end of crypto? And I was like, of course not. And they're like, well, how do you fix it and this and that? And they were just firing these questions at me. And the questions were fair because a lot of people were hurting from this. And I'm saying, look, fundamentally, Bitcoin and crypto in itself, it's not broken. Bitcoin wasn't hacked. Nothing's actually stopped in the background of Bitcoin. If you don't like Bitcoin, the same as with your coin. Hex weathered the storm very well. Ethereum... I think went lower than what it should have. I mean, the truth is there were some great opportunities to buy some very cheap Ethereum. The supply of Ethereum is decreasing. I, but since we've gone to Ethereum 2.0, there's less being mined than there is being burnt. So essentially the supply of Ethereum is going down and randomly you got Ethereum at about $1,100. So my point is, whilst mainstream is still pointing us going crypto bad, fee it good, we just exposed what money is. We exposed what the 2008 financial crisis was we showed how cross-collateralized fake money that is being printed out of thin air will eventually collapse which is about to happen in fiat we showed that we can recover from this quite quickly because sure there might be some rough waters ahead but nothing's at zero you know like <laughs> not even ftt itself is at zero and it should be so you know of all the coins that should be you know written off they're not at zero and even when you go back Luna is still not at zero. Celsius is still not at zero. BitConnect, I don't know. The, the co code for BitConnect was BCC. I don't know if that's still around, but who cares? Because that was so many years ago. But even when we go through this, we're still not at zero. And the big coins aren't at zero. And if you if you, you know, pan out and expand and look into the big picture, nothing's stopping. Yes, this hurts. Yes, it's a hit in the guts. And it's like, oh my God, this is not again. But it's good because... Development is still happening. Nothing has dropped to zero. The volumes are still up. I'm scooping up, as you may have been, buying that dip or dollar cost averaging, whichever you want to do, or just sitting on the sidelines. You don't need to sell. Development is still moving forward. Institutions are still buying this stuff. Countries are still looking at investing in it. Whether we like it or not, CBDCs, which is based on this technology, they're still being developed. All of it's still moving forward. And we will recover much quicker than you think. It's not going to be like 2008 with the tradi traditional finance where it's going to take, well, it depends which way you look at it, five to 10 years to recover. No, not at all. It, it could be five to 10 weeks or even five to 10 months. I think that's pushing it out a bit far. But in any case, honestly, I, I'm not overly phased by this. The, the only thing that we need to do as a community, this is the world according to me, we need to rally together as crypto goers, and we need to figure out standards before there are regulations. Regulations are coming whether we like it or not, got it. But stand, standards versus regulations. 
Standards is when we as a community, we come together and say, what are the rules? What what do we agree to with this? And some of the rules might be never leave it, your crypto on an exchange. Cool. But it might go a bit further and say, hey, if you're an exchange, we want to see your books live. And why do we want to see it live? Because the blockchain enables it. We can see Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the other, well, nearly all the other coins live in real time on an open source blockchain. We want that same standard on every single exchange that's out there. And if you don't present that standard when you come to this space, we're not supporting you. Now, when I talk about we not supporting you, I'm really I'm really putting it out to the crypto commentators out there. I have forgone millions upon millions of dollars in sponsorship by saying no to everyone who wants me to plug their product. And the reason why I've done that is because I don't want to compromise myself or you. Number one, I don't want to compromise my brand. But number two, I don't want to compromise you in the sense you say, well, he said it's good. I'm going for it. Now, of course, I do say I use this product and I do say anything can happen in crypto. But I'm in these two worlds. If I let's say I just talk about crypto as numbers and I don't talk about projects. Well, how can we explore anything? So sometimes I have to talk about something that may not work well, but that's very different, my crypto brothers and sisters than me taking money from a company and saying, hey, this new project called Xcoin is going to go to the moon, buy it. That's way different to me saying, hey, I found this weird project. It looks kind of interesting. It's called Hex. I looked into it five years ago. Oh, it did a million percent. Okay. I've never been paid by Richard Hart. I've never been paid by anyone from Hex. It's just not how I roll. And then I look at other projects and say, oh, there's this thing being built around this project. Let's check it out. So on one hand, it's dangerous for me because I might be talking about something that ends up being bad. But on the other hand, I have to talk about things because if I'm not exploring projects, (laughs) what are we doing here? So you've got to have this balancing act of going out there, looking at stuff that you think is interesting as a crypto commentator, but not being in a position where your brand or your audience is compromised by taking money. So. This leads into FTT sponsorship or FTX. Again, FTX is the the platform. FTT is the token. You know, or you should know if you're watching other crypto commentators, nearly all of them, the big ones in particular, were all taking money from FTX, all of them. And I I can only assume how much money that they were taking. And there's one crypto commentator in particular, and I won't say his name, but I had a lot of respect, still have a lot of respect, even I'm conflicted with this really good operator really smart puts out some good stuff some great interviews but he was constantly plugging ftx constantly because he was he was getting major sponsorship from them so you might say well hang on a second he's doing his job he's been sponsored by someone okay i could say that but i turned down sponsorship and i don't have as much money as this person And I could have taken million dollars, millions of dollars from these companies, but I don't. And I don't because I can't hand on my heart say, I trust this company. The only platforms I show you on the crypto land are the ones that I've been using for years and the ones I trust. But when a company comes to me and says, Adam, we're going to give you $15,000 for a 30 second plug. It's so easy for me to go, okay, tell me what to say. And I do a plug. Can't do it. Won't do it because it's wrong. It's morally wrong. So when I'm talking about the standards, if you are a crypto commentator, who I'm sure is not even listening to this right now, but you, my crypto brothers and sisters, you can push it out to them. You tell them, if you're going to advertise a product, if you're going to take money from this company, which is different to affiliate links, affiliate links are slightly different because you're only taking money when they use the product, still questionable to an extent, but it's way different to someone says, hey, Jono, Here's $15,000 for 30 seconds, or we want to be the sponsor of your channel at $5 million for the next five months. Man, if you're getting that much money and you're that big, you have a moral and professional obligation to look into that crap, look into it and see what the hell is going on, because that's some serious money there. Because those of us on the sideline who are not taking these sponsorship deals, we're not accepting the money. We're not putting you in a difficult position. And even when we do say we do like this product, we don't guarantee it. And we say, well, I say, I can't talk on on behalf of all of them. I say, remember the rules. 
Never more than 20% in any one place. Only invest what you can afford to lose and accept that all investments come with risk. I'm now going to talk about another crypto commentator that I don't respect. He's big, if you can see the camera. I'll leave it at that. 95% of the coins that he has plugged, more than, have gone to zero. And yet he has over a million subs. I'm like, man, you're kidding me. You're kidding. You're killing us. You're killing the community. You're killing the viewers out there who are just coming into this space and trying to do the right thing, trying to get some idea of what's going on. And of course, you've got the line, do your own research. Well, what does that mean? If you're new to the space, you don't know how to do your research. You don't know how to figure all this out. So it's so easy to go, oh, it's their fault because they didn't look into it. Well, really, where do you find out this stuff? I'll read the white paper. White papers can just be copied and pasted with a control F replace all of these words with those words. So now you've got like what looks like a new white paper, but it's just the same as someone else's and you've changed words. We saw that with many coins during the 2017 run. There was this one white paper and all these new companies were just making the new white paper with a well, the same white paper with different pictures and different words. So if it was X coin, this new company would just take that white paper, get all the X coin and replace it with white coin, change the font, change some colors, change some pictures. Bang, it looks like you got a white paper. Well, how do you research that? Which goes into why these big commentators have a moral and professional obligation. If you're going to take money, do the research. And I'm not talking to you, my viewers. I'm talking to the crypto commentators out there. If you're sitting pretty and, and you're already rich already, if you're, which most of them are, you have a moral obligation to say, right, I'm sitting on millions. Someone's just given me a $5 million advertisement deal. I'm going to spend $5,000 researching it. And you're thinking, well, hang on. Why am I going to spend $5,000 researching it? Go to business. When you go to business and you you do tenders or you do quotes, for, there's a tender out there and you put a quotation in there. I can tell you right now, having been in business for years, that costs a lot of money. As a simple, I'll give you a simple example. Let's say there's a, a cleaning contract for all the office space in city Los Angeles and all the government buildings there. And they say, right, we're going to offer one contract to the cleaning company to do all the cleaning in all the office buildings in Los Angeles. Well, what do they got to do? The company's got to go send a representative to go out there and do a site survey. You've got to do your your risk and cost benefit analysis. You've got to actually figure out how much it's going to cost. You've got to draw up this bloody quote. It takes about a month to do. It costs at least $5,000 to do it. And then you submit that for consideration to the LA County government, as an example. You're competing against all of these other contractors. And if you're lucky, you get the contract. If you're unlucky, which is pretty typical in business, you've just all done all that work and you get nothing in return. The same standard should apply for these crypto commentators that were plugging the crap out of a fake company. We saw it with Celsius. I never plugged it. We saw it with FTT. I never plugged it. We saw it with Luna. I, I've never plugged it. I think I have spoken about it. I think, yes, I have spoken about it. Absolutely, I've spoken about it. When I, to sort of bring this all into one bubble moving forward before we look at the numbers. You have to protect yourself as well. Remember the rules. Only invest what you can afford to lose. Never put more than 20% in one place. When you use an exchange, get your money off there. But also realize in, in crypto, we are going through 200 years of traditional finance exploration, failures, successes, scams, and opportunities, but we're doing it in 200 months. I'm I've said it before, but now I'm even more adamant about this. And I say, we are now in the 2008 global financial crisis of the traditional financial space. So what were the opportunities out of there? If you could go back to 2008, what would you do at the end of that financial crisis that would set you up for what happened in the future? You might look at properties that were cheap. Look at cryptos that are cheap. You might look at the businesses that survived and weathered that storm and what you could do in the crypto space. But then you also got to look at what was not fixed in the global financial crisis. And I'll tell you what wasn't fixed in the global financial crisis of 2008, money. Fiat is more broken now than it was in 2008. And so are banks, why? Because in 2008, they were bailed out by taxes. Now they're gonna be bailed in with your savings, but they're more in debt. They're lending out less money. Inflation is moving quicker. They're in big trouble. You've lost confidence in them. There's an alternative. So banks are in a way worse position this time around than they were in 2008. 
So when you look at that, when you apply that paradigm to what's happening in crypto now, think about the opportunities that are out there. Okay, big opening rant. Let's see some of your comments there. Uh, going right down. We've, what have we got? Peter Gillespie. Oops, sorry, mate. Uh, Defo, good video. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Splinter 101, heard his jet was almost... Oh, I've missed that one. Sorry, Splinter 101. I'll have to go through the comments. Uh, oh, Sniff, you said something that I, I won't read out, but yeah, I won't, I'll skip that. Uh, Mitch Kohler, you said Hex triple bottom. Look, I, I will talk about Hex for a minute. Let me just have a sip. Okay, I know some of you hate Hex, and I understand why you hate Hex. I get why it looks like a Ponzi scheme for the same reason that Bitcoin could look like a Ponzi scheme. I will say this about Hex. Hex barely moved when this happened. The reason why I'm talking about Hex is because it's such a controversial coin and I've got two strong divides in my community. And that's okay. We're a diverse community. You want that. If you want just a Hex community, go there. If you want an anti-Hex community, go somewhere else. But if you want a balanced community, you're in the right space. Hex didn't drop below that three cent mark. Some said it went up 7%, but I didn't see that data do that. But ultimately, Hex held steady when this happened. So it didn't go up, it didn't go down, it just held steady. Now, why is that impressive? It's impressive because everything else, with the exception of a couple, there's always a couple of outliers, just 21,000 coins. But Hex is big, it's in the top 20, and it's quite controversial, and it didn't really move. Now, I put this down for two reasons, or put this down to two reasons. And I'm going to balance it here. So, so I'm completely balanced here. For, for the lovers and haters, I'm going to tell you the two sides of why Hex didn't move. The, the good reason why it didn't move is because the way it's set up and everyone was in these stakes, you you don't want to end your stakes. You've, you've bought your Hex. You've locked it up in a stake for a certain period of time. And irrespective of what the market's doing, you don't end that stake to pull the money out. You, you don't do it. I mean, why would you do it? Because you're going to have to pay money to end early. You're going to lose future staking rewards. And then you're going to sell at a loss because that's going to drive the price down. So the model of Hex actually proved itself here. So well done to all you Hexicans for showing how it held the line. Again, didn't go up, didn't go down. It just pretty much held flat. Now I'll talk about the bad side. And I can't substantiate this. But if you had someone who had a vested interest in Hex and they had lots and lots of money and they wanted to show in the long term that Hex can weather these storms, how do you prop up the price of Hex? You buy lots of it. Now, again, I'm not saying that's happened, that happened, but I'm just balanced thinking here. You know, you've got to do these thought experiments. The price is going to crash. Crikey, how do I prop this up? Right, instead of going shopping today and buying more landfill, I'm going to put all of the, that shopping money into the markets to prop up the price. I don't have enough data to substantiate that thought. I do have enough data to su substantiate the prior thought, which is a lot of people had their money staked in hex. That's why it didn't move. Um Coinbase and Kraken will survive, possibly do your own research. Yeah, look, there are a lot of um, platforms that will survive this. It, it Just like a lot of banks survived when the collapse happened. The, the whole industry hasn't collapsed. It's, it's actually not that bad. It looks really bad, but it is really, it's not that bad. We wanted to get this guy out of the space quickly. He's gone. And OKB, which is on the crypto land, uh, CoinSpot, which is on the crypto land, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Coinbase and Kraken, they're fine as well. And Binance, which is also on the crypto land, that's fine as well. So, you know, it's a big player. It's arguably the second biggest platform that's gone down, but it's okay. It's really not that bad. If, you know, to the mainstream, they want to show the world's ending. But if it was that bad, Bitcoin would be 50 bucks. But Bitcoin's currently at $16,762. Uh, moving further down, Monica Mofit Mills. G'day, Monica. Hi, with a smiley face. Good to have you here, my crypto sister, Brenton Smith. Howdy, Adam. I appreciate the coinly discount. Just did my taxes. Uh, good. Um, remember, <laughs> if you're doing your taxes, which you should be, and you want to do line-by-line -line accounting, you're a madman or woman because it's impossible to do. Coinly is a product I'm more than comfortable promoting. Why? Because it's not a coin. It's not an exchange. It's a tax compliance software piece of technology that will make your life so much easier. 
So if you want a 30% discount, use Adam Stokes 30. Uh, moving further down, Hexkin says, hi, uh, Charlene Shawshaw. Hi, Uncle Adam. Hello, Charlene. Chris D. Doquan, Terra Luna was, Terra Luna was a failed experiment. FTX is a clear fraud. Chris D., I think you've actually summarized that quite well. I'll read that. Actually, I can put it up. Sorry, I should be putting these up. Chris D., Doquan, Terra Luna was a failed experiment. FTX is a clear fraud. Absolutely. Absolutely. Could, I couldn't agree more. Terra Luna, although Terra Luna would somewhat argue that it was a fraud in the sense that those who knew what was going on in the background, they were seeing, they were saying, oh, it's all fake. But the reason why it was an experiment is because they were actually seeing what, what would happen with this stable coin. What would happen if we had this algorithmic stable coin that would do this when the native token was doing that? And for a while it worked, but then it actually failed. Lockie Pa says, Adzi, g'day Lockie. Uh, moving further on. Uh, hearing there's another four exchanges, this from Dhexican. Hearing there's another four exchanges on the brinks, on the brink. You guys hearing the same? Um, yes, I am. So there are exchanges that are on the brink, but it's actually not a new thing. So first of all, cross-collateralized exchanges, they will be hurting with one another. You will see more exchanges going down, um, but there's a lot of exchanges that are doing quite well. So so what's the solution? Just get your money off an exchange. Go to the crypto land, click on Trez, um, Ledger. Oh, sorry, Trezor. I, you can do Trezor or Ledger. They're, they're pretty much both the same. It's just two competing companies. Um, and get yourself a hardware wallet. Then when you get yourself a hardware wallet, take your money off an exchange and if the exchange has collapsed, it doesn't affect you. It does not affect you. There was a, a company who wrote to me and they, they're a new hardware wallet company and they've asked me to advertise for them. And, and they've, they gave me a really good offer as well, but, but I had to say no. So it's not a coin. Therefore, it's actually a tool to help you keep safe. But because I haven't used it, and it's taking your crypto and putting it onto a hardware device. I can't handle my heart, say, this hardware wallet is safe. I can't do it. It probably is, but I can't substantiate my beliefs until it's been around for a while and I've used it for a while. But, you know, what do you do? You, you start promoting this hardware wallet. Everyone puts their money on it. Two years later, oh, they already knew your private seed or they knew what was happening in the background. Bang, they wipe out all these hardware wallets. Uncle Adam gets his five-figure 30-second plug payment, and it's like, not worth it, not worth it. Chris D, super chat, you cut straight to the top. <laughs> Chris D to the webcam fund. Hey, so a bit of fun here. I've got like a $2,000 EOS 80D camera that you're looking at me through right now. Last week or two weeks ago, for whatever reason, it didn't work. I had to go to a like $50 Logitech 1080p crappy camera that I had lying around somewhere and I quickly plugged it in and it worked. Christy is still giving me money for the webcam fund. Very grateful, my friend. Um, but the big camera is working. What I'm going to do with that money, though, is buy some Bitcoin, in case you're wondering. I know hexagons, you want me to get hex. I know Ethereum, you want me to get Ethereum. I know Cardanians, you want me to get Cardano. I'm buying some Bitcoin. It's cheap. Moving further on. CZ just posted about exchanges listing their holdings and then moving money. You should stay away. Get your money off ASAP. Yeah, I agree. Look, just get your money off the exchanges. Just... It's just like doing a run on the banks. Unfortunately, that, that's where we are at the moment. Same thing happened in other financial breakdowns. People went to banks and took their money out. And what did that do? That exposed all the banks who didn't have money, which is actually pretty much all of them in modern times. K-Lord says cold wallet, lads. Absolutely. Okay, Chris Rayleigh, you said Sam has fled to Argentina on his private jet. Chris, can you substantiate that? So the article that I've got here, let's just talk about where is Sam bankrupt fraud. Uh, my apologies. Sam, Sam Bankman Freed. The article that I've got here, and it's so hard to get information. This is from Coin Telegraph. It says, it is understood Sam bankrupt fraud. And God, I got it wrong again. And two former FTX associates are currently under supervision by Bahami, Baham, <laughs> Bahamanian authorities. So he's in the Bahamas. FTX former CEO Sam Bankman-Fried, co-founder Gary Wang, and director of engineering Nishad Singh are understood to be in the Bahamas and are 
under supervision by local authorities. What does that even mean? Under su- what does that mean? Like they're standing out the front of his room watching him or his house watching him. I mean, he's not arrested because that's a different word. I don't know. It, these things are so fluid. It's hard to tell what's happening. And, you know, there's a, a claim that he's looking to flee to Dubai because they don't have the same extradition laws that we do in most Western nations. So where is this guy? Who knows? Going further down. Ah, okay. Question from Simon Frank Tamago. Why did FTT pump despite CZ limiting deposits? So we saw FTT do a little dead cat bounce. We've seen this before. We've seen it with Celsius. We've seen it with Luna. We didn't see it with BitConnect because that was way different. But we've seen it with other coins when they die. The bad boys, or the cowboys, I should say, they come in and they quickly swing trade this thing and they, they make a quick return. It, it's textbook. It, it's not illegal and it's not immoral. It's high risk. But we've seen it before and the same thing happened again. Now, the other thing that a lot of people were doing when this thing was collapsing is that they sh- <laughs> they shorted the crap out of the coin. So as this thing is falling down, people are like, well, it's pretty obvious that they're going to sh- um, this going to fall. So they short it. This is where you can make huge money in a falling market. If you know what you're doing and you want to swing trade or margin call, I mean, geez, this is margin trade. This is where you could do it. You, you could actually come over to the crypto land or go wherever you want. You could get onto OKB, Binance. Uh, what else have I got there? Let's go to the crypto land. Bybit. Bybit is another one that I trust. And you could put this position and say, right, these coins are going to fall. I I bet that these things are going to go down. They go down. You pull your money out at the right time. Bang, you've just made heaps of money. Story time with Uncle Adam. I played baseball yesterday, and I'm really sore from it. I pitched, did a, did a really good job, so that's a good news story. I didn't hit anyone. <laughs> when you pitch, sometimes, you know, because there's not much room in the in the box that you're throwing the ball into. And, you, you know, you're throwing a ball that depends how good you are. We're in the 100Ks an hour mark. And, you know, if you're off just a little bit, you hit the batter. Now, as a pitcher, you don't want to do that because as soon as you hit the batter, they automatically get first base. Last yesterday when I was playing baseball, I I had a perfect pitching record. I didn't I didn't walk anyone and I didn't hit anyone, so that's fantastic. Now a lot of them hit my pitches, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> but statistically, I looked really good on paper. Why am I talking about this? Because that I, I'm the platinum sponsor for my team. I've spent a lot of money sponsoring my team, and they know that the crypto land or the crypto markets are down. So they're singing out to me. They're saying, uh, where have you been? What's going on? H- have you been hurt? And I'm like, no, not at all. In, in a falling market, <laughs> when you're trading these markets and you know what you're doing, you, you can get in there and you can actually swing trade this and make a lot of money. Where it really hurts is when it's just trading flat. When it's trading really flat, that's when it really hurts. Now, of course, the other thing of is if, even if you don't want a long or short a market, which you, which you shouldn't if you don't know what you're doing, just stay away from that. When you're dollar cost averaging, which many of you said to me that you are, you basically came in and you just just got cheap crypto. Think about this. When things are on sale in a shop, like, I don't know, a Louis Vuitton handbag. Now, let's get away from that. When a TV, when a TV is on sale, you go running into the shops and you're like, wow, 30% off. I'm buying this thing. Now, that's a depreciating asset. But when something like Bitcoin or Ethereum or BNB is on sale, you're like, oh, I'm going to sell it. It's like, what? <laughs> Why would you do that? But most of you in this community, because I've been shoving it down your throat for so long, I'm like, buy the dip, sell the top. Now, I know that sounds pretty obvious, but so many humans do the, the complete opposite. They buy the top. They're like, and it goes back to this example. Imagine a TV went from $1,000 to $3,000. Very few people would rush out and buy that TV. But the truth is, we saw that actually with the car market. So recently when we had everything pull back, people rushed out to the car market because, and when I say everything pulled back, you know, there was no money in the economy. Everything was very tight. There was not much trade going on because supply lines were shut down. The pandemic was hit. So everything has sort of pulled in really tight. Therefore, supply chains were difficult. Therefore, cars went up in value because they were more difficult to get. They went up in price. Did they go up in value? Price is different to value. But Everyone rushed out and go, oh, 
these cars are really expensive. I better go buy them. And that's exactly what happened. That was, in fact, an example of when cars that are a depreciating as asset, and there's no shortage of them. Yes, there might be some shortage of chips, got it, but there's no shortage of cars in the world. They all rushed out and they bought these cars and people were buying cars and selling them at a premium the next day. You could literally, as a Land Cruiser, as an example, a Land Cruiser in, in Australia was around, depends what model, but kit number simple. You could get, you'd wait six months and get it for 150 grand and you could sell it the next day for 170 grand. Bang, straight away. People were paying $20,000 premium on what was technically a secondhand car, which was a depreciating asset, which is arguably unlimited. Because they, we're not running out of cars. They keep making more and more cars. Trust me, there's no shortage of cars. But when we, when humans see these markets run away, they want to buy a top. And then when they start crashing, which cars absolutely will, you're going to see these fire sales where people can't afford to run them. So they're just going to, well, they can't afford to insure them. They can't afford to fuel them because they would have got bigger engines than what they should have been getting because petrol costs money. And they're going to sell them and there's going to be an excess supply of cars. So... Just under, if you're not sure about the psychology, read my book, 28 Pro Trader Tips to the Art of Trading, and we can go through the psychology of the markets. Okay, um, before I get into your comments, let's actually just look at the Fear and Greed Index. So the Fear and Greed Index is at 22 at the moment, which is, I'll just refresh. Yep, still at 22. Last, <laughs> last week, we're at 40. We moved that quickly. We went from 40 last week to 22 this week. Now, remember, I said it's not that bad. Can anyone remember, and, and throw it in the comments, can anyone remember how low we went? Was it Celsius or Terra Luna? God, everything's merging so quickly. It was either Celsius or Terra Luna. When that collapse happened, throw it in the comments. How low did the fear and greed index go? Which just rhymed. Looking at the comments now. Troy Cannon, I think you've got it. I think it was six. It, it got as low as six. Farmer Gregor, you're right. It's a lagging indicator. So family, Farmer Gregor, you've actually put a um, Farmer Gregor, you've actually put a prediction out there for next week. Uh, and first of all, Farmer Gregor, thank you for keeping us fed and alive. Um, you're an unsung hero. I have an immense respect for your industry. Without you, we're all dead. So, and I'm glad to see you coming into this space. But Farmer Gregor is right. It's a lagging indicator. And he's put a prediction for six, no, what do you say? Eight next week. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it could be. Yeah, You're right. It is a lagging indicator. It could go a bit lower. Ronnie, you've asked me for a quick summary of what I said at the start. Ronnie, you know you're my favorite. But it was a big summary. It was a big rant at the beginning. So my recommendation is after this, go back to the beginning and watch again and everyone out there if um if you wouldn't mind can you give us a like um it really does help i've been losing subs over the last uh last month uh, i don't take it too personal because everyone in the crypto land is losing subs but what doesn't make sense is that my views go up my likes are going up the comments are going up the view time is going up but the subs are going down don't get it don't get it at all Okay, let's get back to uh, some data here. So, some good news. The biggest gainer over the last seven days, it was the biggest gainer. So, there's still opportunities. So, let's go straight to the biggest gainers. The biggest gainer was Trust Wallet. You're up 40.3%. And from memory, that was the biggest gainer last week as well. So, Trust Wallet is doing very well. Now, now why do you think that is? Think about why... Who can tell me in the comments... Start thinking outside the box. What's Trust Wallet? It's where a place that you put your exchange, your your money. It's not an exchange. Why would Trust Wallet be going up whilst exchanges are going down? Comments. Uh, move, looking for someone. Mima said we're not even one k likes. Wow, yeah, I know. I don't think we've got one k viewers yet. We've only got one hundred and thirty nine watching. Uh, and remember, because I'm in the Australian time zone, uh, most of my viewers are in bed. Or they may be, yeah, probably in bed. It's Saturday night. Farmer Gregory says, decentralized. Mark Williams says, it's in the name. Ronnie Esco says, not your keys, not your coin. Shockey, 1987. 
says safety. Troy Cannon, very active tonight, Troy. Thank you, boom, boom. I think he's right. Troy Cannon says everyone's moving off exchanges. So that, that's an example. Remember I said, here you go, Ronnie. Here's a summary of something I said at the beginning. I said, if this is like the global financial crisis of 2008, quick summary for you, Ronnie. The global financial system of the past was 200 years. That's how long it's taken to get to where we are now. Sure, you could say it's 1,000 years, but look at the last 200 years. We're doing those last 200 years and 200 months in crypto. In the, we are now going, I argue, through the global financial crisis of 2008. And I said to the viewers, I said, what are some of the opportunities that you could see after 2008 in the traditional financial sector? Now the same question is given to you for crypto. What are some of the financial opportunities that you can find in the crypto land because of what's happened right now? Property is cheap. Trust wallets are trusted. I, I don't use trust wallets, so I can't speak on it. So if you're wondering, hey, Adam, is it a good product? Don't know. I'm not, I, I cannot comment on that. I can only say this. It's been around for a while. It works. But the issue with what happened with Trust Wallet is that a lot of fake companies came out, scammers, and they said, hey, we're Trust Wallet. And they put their application on, I think it was Google Play and possibly even I, iTunes, like on the Apple Store. And people were putting their money into a fake Trust Wallet. So that's not Trust Wallet. They're scammers. And, and we just see this over and over again. We also saw it with Decentraland. If you've been to Decentraland, there was a, a shadow site that was being made of Decentraland and it was beautiful. It was perfect. And if you weren't clued up, as soon as you opened Decentraland, it said, put in your, um, your MetaMask secret phrase. And so many people got burnt because they're like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to Decentraland. This is a big company. That they didn't, they weren't cleared up on security, and that you know, stupidly but ignorantly is probably the fairer word. They put in this is my seed phrase or whatever it was, you know, John Jack house car bird can whatever your seed phrase is. The second they put that seed phrase in, bang, all their money was gone from their MetaMask wallet because it was a shadow site. So, so that's another reason why I talk about the crypto land because even my mates they say, hey Adam, I want to use this site. Uh, which what's the link? And I say go to the crypto land. And like, why? I said, because I can guarantee all those links. I can't guarantee the products will always use, will be, be used in the future and will always work. But I can guarantee that everything's on the crypto land. They're real. I do the same. When I'm using my products, unless it's in my, um, in my searches, I go straight to the crypto land because I know <laughs> that it's the right link because I've been using it for years and I built it and I put it there and it's a safe place to go. Now, Dre's just told me the camera's gone. Uh, are you still seeing me? Oh, the camera has gone. <laughs> I think I need that camera fund to come back up. Here I was saying that my camera was fixed. That's weird. Hang on. I'll just turn my camera off. I'll turn my camera on. We are live again. <laughs> All right. Thank you, my crypto brothers and sisters. Let me tell you what just happened. Microsoft Teams, for whatever reason, decided to open itself up and start chewing into my microphone and camera not in that order it first went to my camera and then went into my audio so poor old Streamyard, which i'm speaking to you right now Streamyard is a, a program where i can actually talk to you live it was basically saying some other program is using your microphone and uh, camera therefore we can't syntax error so i just had to uninstall teams restart the computer come back in and we're live God, these first world problems. Glenn Schmen, good to hear you again, Uncle A. Thank you. <laughs> Clint Ronson says, we are live. Thank you all for having a good sense of humor. You know what? When I read articles, story time with Uncle Adam, when I read articles and I'm pre-recording, if I make a mistake, I just pause, cut out my mistake, or just start reading again and edit it out so you think I'm a, a really good reader. When you're doing, I was just thinking about these um, you know, TV presenters, the news presenters, they are highly skilled people. But, you know, the ability to sit in front of a camera live and read through an entire script perfectly without any errors, that's some real skill there. But in the, in the land of YouTube, when we make a mistake, meh, who cares? Everyone, we're doing it live. We're all one big happy family here. Anyway, leave comments. Where was I up to? I lost my camera, then I lost my audio, and it was only until I was ranting away, ranty, 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 that I... Someone said, we can't hear you. Um, the meme says, how's the weather in Argentina? 
Uh, that's a good time. So Mark Williams, um, well done. Welcome back from Mitchell. Thank you. JBA strike. Bloody teams. Yeah, I hate teams. I, I just uninstalled it. It's come back. The little logo's back down at the bottom search bar. I, I literally uninstalled this thing and the logo's still there. What's going on? Top performers, Dre. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dre. That's where we were. Let's go into the biggest gainers. Okay, so the biggest gainers, Trust Waller up 40%, DYDX up 25%, and Pax Gold up 3%. That's not much. So you've really only got, and then we're into kind of the stable coins. So we've got two outliers, which is Trust Wallet, TWT, and I'm not sure if I, you heard this part, but I was thinking, saying the problem with Trust Wallet is not so much Trust itself, but people were using, they're making fake sites. They're making a fake Trust Wallet. You are downloading the application. You were putting all of your crypto on this trust wallet, which you thought was trusted. It was a fake trust wallet and you lost all your crypto. And that's why some people have said, do you trust trust, which is fun to say. And I said, look, I hear it's a good platform. I hear it's a good product, but yeah, you know, where do you get, where do you download it from? And that's why these sort of off storage or sorry, off exchange hot wallets, because trust wallet is a hot wallet. It's not, a, it's not a physical device. It's, a hot wallet. And I, I do love one hot wallet. It's called Exodus. Exodus is a good hot wallet. Well, well, what's good? Anything can be compromised, but I've been using Exodus for years and it's a hot wallet, which is not an exchange. It's just a hot wallet that you can plug into your computer or onto your phone. And once I say plug in, it's just an application and you can go anywhere in the world and, and access your crypto funds. Exodus has been around for years, but will it be hacked? God, I don't know. Will Trust Wallet be hacked? Well, it hasn't been so far, but it's been faked. So Please just be careful. Um, and Braden, thank you. Yeah, can you can you smash that like button again? We're starting again. Jeez, get knocked down and get back up again. I'm pretty sure there's a song about that. And now you've got that song in your head. But let's talk about the biggest losers over the last seven days. Oh my God, Solana. I will talk about this post that was put out on Twitter. A, or oh, maybe I shouldn't. No, I won't. Solana down 61.9%, currently trading at $14.01. So, so why is Solana dragged down? Okay, comments in there. We'll talk about it. Why why is Solana just dropped significantly? Uh, Andrea said Exodus and Trezor are a great match. Yes, they are. They are absolutely a great match. Let's say Rafan says hi again. Good day. Uh, smash the like because you came back. Thank you, Vlad the uh, Third. Use Nomics or Coin. Paprika. Yeah, I use both. Um, who, who said that? Uh, Lass, Lassie, I, I, I've got Nomics right here. So here's Nomics. I use both. Remember, get your data diet. You don't want just one set of data. You, you need to go to multiple sources of data. Uh, so Alex here. Yeah, so why did Solana go down? It's owned by SBF, part of it. that Yeah, FTX owned heaps of it. So this is where I'm talking about the cross-collateralization. Again, fun to say. When you have invested so much so we saw this with Celsius. Uh, we definitely saw it with Luna because Luna bought heaps of Bitcoin. And and it's not so bad. You know, Luna wanted something to back it. So they, instead of buying gold or real estate or whatever, they bought lots of Bitcoin. So when they started to collapse, they had to dump all their Bitcoin to try and recover some funds. Well, something similar is happening with Solana. FTT had lots of, sorry, FTX rather. FTX is a platform. FTT is a native token. FTX owned heaps of Solana. And they dumped their position. They dumped their position because they needed liquidity. They needed money. So when they dumped that Solana, I mean, look at that, 61.9%. It's now in position 15. It's the biggest loser over the week that was. But it used to be in like the top 10, 11. You know, they're always moving. But it was in around the top 10 for some time, slipped out, and now it's position 15. But noting all the drama around Solana, wormholes, wallets, bridges, uh, um, I was going to say over leveraged positions, but that's probably not fair to say. It's more that people were dumping their positions that were owning it. <laughs> Solana, there's only two worlds for Solana, in my opinion. This thing is going to be a super coin, proof of history, Ethereum killer, which I know is a big call, settle down, or it's going to be, it's going to fade into nothing and going to be another crap coin that goes into the abyss. There's kind of no middle ground because those who love Solana, they absolutely love it. It does a lot. It's very fast. It's very cheap to use. There's a lot of people who are building on it and believe in it. Even Power Ledger. Do you remember Power Ledger? That's a big Australian coin. It's been around for years. It's proven itself very well. They they actually started to develop on Solana. That's a big company. Um, and you see other 
platform is going to Solana. But ultimately, the, the truth is, my crypto brothers, most people are building on Polygon Matic, which is a layer two to Ethereum. And it makes sense because if you've ever minted an NFT, if you int, mint an NFT using just Ethereum, particularly during you know a bull run, it costs so much money. You, you could be paying hundreds, hundreds of dollars to mint an NFT. But if you use Matic or Polygon on top of it as a layer two solution, it's the same process doing the same thing, but it will cost you like two cents. So it's literally like $300 versus two cents. So a lot of these big companies are like, well, Ethereum's established itself in the market, but the gas fees are too much. So how are we going to make it work? We'll use the layer two solution, which is Matic. And that's why Matic has been doing very well lately, very well indeed. But other coins are coming out saying, well, you don't even need a layer two solution. Our layer one is so good that you're not, you're not going to even have to worry about it. Is it going to are these other coins going to work? Pulse is an example. Hexagon. I can hear you, Hexagons. I can hear you. What about Pulse? Pulse isn't out yet. It's not. It doesn't exist. At the moment, all it is is words. I'm not saying it won't exist. Yes, I have invested in it. But then there's a second part to it. Even if it does work, will it be adopted? That's not up to me and you. That's actually up to the market. So time will tell. Moving further down, who boy token HT, you're down 50.2%. That took a massive hit. Half its value. It did have a couple of good run-ups. So that's position 69, third biggest loser, sorry, second biggest loser, followed by tokenized exchange, TKX, down 45%. Now, remember, that was the biggest gainer, I think, like not in the biggest gainers, but in fact, the biggest gainer, I think for three weeks in a row. So on one hand, yeah, the whole market's pulling back. Yeah, that's had a big run, but a 45% hit, that's big. Aptos, APT, uh, I'll have to check my data, but I'm pretty sure FTT, sorry, FTX was invested in that as well. Kronos CRO down 43%. Can anyone tell me why CRO is down that much? I, um, it's not a hollow question. I don't know why that's down so much. It's a lot. I mean, everything's down, but, you know, that's a big coin. Down to uh, position 31, down 43.3%. 43.3%, ApeCoin down 42.8%, Arweave down 41%. I believe that was another coin owned by FTX. There was a really good video, and I'll leave, in fact, I'll, I'll give you the link. I'll, I'll put it in the comments after the end of this video. There's a video by Mark Moss, who's not, he's not really a crypto goer. He's more of an economist. He's like a, a young, well, young, he, he looks fit. He's a surfer. He's, he'd be older than me. So... I'll leave that one alone, but he explains stuff really well and he's really good at economics. And he actually spoke about what happened with FTX and FTT. And his surmisation of this whole thing was, was actually the best one I've seen. CoffeeZilla also did a really good one. So if, if, you, if you want to get information with what's happened, CoffeeZilla and Mark Moss, those are my two recommendations. Just put Mark Moss FTX or CoffeeZilla FTX, the videos that come up for that, they're the best ones I've had so far. But Mark Moss, when he was talking about all the coins that um, FTX was invested in, there was like all these random ones. And one of them was actually um, Arweave, and another one was Aave. <clears throat> so uh, potentially near protocol, I don't know, but certainly Arweave and Aave, they jump out. And, and I'm pretty sure Aptos as well, APT, they were invested heavily in that. Uh, Brisk Cannon says, I reckon people are worried about CRO due to the FTX stuff. They are, the next, are they the next exchange to go down? Uh, Briss, that, am I saying your name right? Briss, I, I think that's a, a good possibility, um, a good uh, foresight into what could be happening. So CRO has been around for a while. CRO has had troubles in the past. It did a lot of it. Uh, here's another pattern. Here's, so you look for patterns. FTT was FTX was also investing heavily into sport. So as I understand it, I believe it was Major League Baseball or uh, the NFL. I think it was baseball. All the umpires had FTX written on their sleeve. And that just gave me a little bit of a flashback to CRO when crypto.com invested in that big sports stadium. You remember they made they, they put all this money into the sports stadium. Now, in, in CRO's defense, you know, if the markets didn't pull back, they would be superstars at the moment because they, they did massive marketing. They had Matt Damon. They're putting all of this money out there. But it just, it's like a little, oh, I've seen this pattern before. You know, we're now seeing it again where FTX put huge amounts of sponsorship into 
all of these sports, not stadiums, but sporting events and the sport ecosystem, and then they went down. <clears throat> uh, looking at your comments, got any super chats? No super chats. Uh, Clintrons, you were right about FTX owning heaps of Solana. Taurus 89, I'm, I'll, I'll put you up. When do you think the food shortages will happen in Australia? Okay. So here's the thing with Australia. We've got crap loads of food, but we're a big country. So people say, oh, Australia's okay because we don't need to import much food. Well, it's it's half true. Yes, we can grow a lot of stuff. So, so when I was doing my economics degree, one of the examples, and I can still remember his name. I, I won't say it just in case he doesn't want to say it, but I still remember one of my professor's name names. He told me that, what we do in Australia as an example, so we'll grow lots of sugar and we'll take that sugar cane and process it into sugar. Then we'll put it on ships, massive ships, and send it over to China. Then China will put it into little packets and send it back to us and, and we'll buy our own sugar from China. Now, now why would this happen? It's because it, when you're packaging sugar, you know, I think about the individual packets. You go to a cafe and there's sugar in an individual packet. For us to do that in Australia, costs a lot of money so it works out economically cheaper to just send huge huge containers full of raw sugar over to china they process it through their factories and put it into little packets and then they send it all the way back to us crazy but that's how the world works another story time when i was in korea i went through this really weird processing place it was fascinating so it was at a port and it was a business tour. So I was, I was very lucky to see what they do. And there was this big warehouse where they took shipping containers full of stuff to repackage it. Uh, the one example I can give was razors. So they had these Gillette razors, <clears throat> excuse me, where all the packaging was written in Chinese, but they needed the packaging to be in Korean. So what they did is unbelievable. They had these Rows and rows and rows. They were all women. I don't know why. They were just all women sitting there with little hair nets on and gloves. And their job was to take a brand new Gillette razor in a packet, open it out of that packet, throw the packet in the bin and put it into a new packet that had Korean writing on it. Insane. And they're doing it with like toothpaste and toothbrushes and all this random stuff that basically you build all this or create all this stuff and you push it over into a market. It doesn't sell there. So another market says, hey, we'll buy that stuff, but it's in the wrong language. So it goes through these ports. And as it goes through these ports, they say, right, we'll, re we'll repackage it here. And they were even doing it for non-English, non-Korean um, companies. So it was toothpaste was another one. They had all these tubes of toothpaste that said Colgate on it from memory, but they were written in like, I don't know, Arabic, but it needed to be in English. So same thing, rows and rows and rows and rows of all these Korean women who were taking brand new boxes of toothpaste and pulling the tube out of the toothpaste box and putting it in a different toothpaste box. And you want to talk about the environment? Oh my God. You should have seen the waste. <laughs> like hoppers, massive hoppers full of perfectly brand new packaging just being thrown out. I just unbelievable. Okay. How does this link to food? When we get food in Australia, if you are in Sydney and food needs to get to Perth, you might say, well, we've got food in Australia. Do you know how far that is with a truck? Do you know how long it takes to get that food from point A to point B? Do you know how much energy that takes? So it's not so much that food shortages will hit us. It's that fuel and energy shortages will hit us. Now, this is where it gets really weird. We actually have heaps of fuel reserves, but we honor the contracts. And we've seen this before where we were paying more in Australia for natural gas, our natural gas, than Japan was for our natural gas, because we had this weird economic setup where it's like, okay, well, we've got this contract. It's like a futures market. We've agreed to this much price, but here we've got all these taxes and supply chain issues. So there was a big event or a big part in uh, history when we were paying more for our own gas in Australia than Japan was in their country, even though it was shipping across the waters. The, it goes back to how do these messes, <laughs> how are these messes created? People get involved. How did this whole mess with FTX go down? Well, people got involved. 
and this is it goes back to why I love Bitcoin. It's because it's there's no sure there's people around the buying and selling, sure there's people around the storage, but Bitcoin's just a mathematical code. It's just that if this much people buy it, it goes up. If this much people sell it, it goes down. You store it here or you keep your keys there. That's it. That, that, that is it. The only way it gets messed up is when people get involved. And that's why at the beginning of this video, which was actually the last video because we lost our connection, it's in fact the, the issue with all of this, ironically, is people, which is why I'm a big believer in code. If you get the code right, if you get mathematical code right, and we get the standards right, we protect ourselves. We don't need regulation come in. Now, I've just remembered that when I was talking about the difference between standards and regulation, standards is what we agree to. We all come together as a community and we say, this is the standards in crypto. Regulation is when an outsider comes in and they say, we are regulating what you do. We are putting our rules into your community. And the, the disaster, the worst part of this FTX nonsense and crash is that we've missed, I believe, we've now missed the boat for standards and we're now going to be smashed with regulations. That's the big thing that's going to happen here. We've missed the boat for us as a community to come in and say, this is what we believe. And this is where Sam bankrupt fraud was so bad for the space because he was kind of new to the space. He was a rich kid. He had already made it, he was already rich before he started. Then he was super rich when he got into it. And then he was going to government and saying, well, these are the regulations that we want. It's like, hang on a second. Who are you? This isn't what Bitcoin was about. This isn't what we agreed on. We didn't vote for you. Who the hell are you to go to that government to say, well, these are the regulations? How about you engage us, the community who have been here for longer, and we didn't come from rich parents, and we've been in this, sp this space trying to support the core of crypto, which is democracy, you know, not, not centralized. The, the opposite of democracy, D democracy is, of course, many people can have a say, but it's actually the decentralization of power. It's a decentralization through voting and through freedom of speech. That, that's the core of democracy. And that, now that's why we like Bitcoin so much, or I do, I can't speak on your behalf. It's because it's democratization, it, the, 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 the democratization, that's fun to say, of money instead of the centralization of money. When you have the centralization of money, it's essentially a communist system for money. When you democratize money through the power of Bitcoin, it changes the game for everything. So when you have this rich kid coming in saying, we're going to do it this, and this is what we want the regulation is, it's like, what? When ultimately he was operating a market failure. How can I prove it? Because now he's gone. He's gone. He's now got authorities after him. He's bankrupt. He's, he's filed for chapter 11. He went from, what did it go? I think it was 29 billion to 1 billion in a week. Now, if you and I had a billion dollars, that's still pretty good. But to go from 29 billion to 1 billion in a week, I don't quote me on those numbers, but it was something as ridiculous as that. that. That's the truth of the markets. You've heard me say it before. The truth is in the markets. And ultimately, the truth was exposed with him. The truth was exposed that he was operating in market failure and it all fell to pieces. So a bit of a digression there, but even though we're talking about food shortages, I think I put in about three random stories there. Thank you, Taurus89. Ultimately, when are they going to happen? Sooner than you think. Keep, keep prepping, people. Keep prepping. Going further down. Um, Dre says, wow, you can zoom YouTube past what you used to be able to do. Stokesy on big screen. Cool. Uh, don't put my mug on the big screen. Just put this here. Finn Bear. Next week has been Richard's. Oh, sorry. This week has been Richard's. Yes, he's done well. Neil Dennison. When I lived in London, I was buying Australian wine cheaper than I could get in Australia. Wow. Uh, Neil, you've just given a, 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 a thought of Korea, in Korea. When I lived in Korea, Hyundai's, the car, and in America you say Hyundai or Hyundai or something, but we say Hyundai. They were more expensive in Korea than they were in Australia. <laughs> And that's because they were putting tariffs on themselves and they're exporting heaps of them. So think about that. They are making these cars in Korea, good cars. And they were more expensive to buy a Hyundai in Korea where they were made with virtually no shipping costs, tiny country in space, not, not in the economy or population, but in, in its space compared to Australia. South Korea, I think the entire Korean peninsula fits into Australia 57 times from memory. And they're making the cars there and I could get them cheaper in Australia than I could in Korea. It, this is what I'm talking about. People are weird. We just do weird stuff in, in economics. 
Really, really weird stuff. James, morning from the UK, Adam. Pleasure to see you live. What a mess of, the, of a week that's passed. Yes. Yes, it has, James. Greetings to Mother England. Hope you're doing well over there. I don't know if it's hot or cold. Ed MC has given me a cheers. Thanks, Ed. Might have a cold one later. That is water. Brizology, also giving us a cheers. Looks like Brizology and Ed MC are going to have a beer virtually. Brizology also says the central bank has almost got us, but CZ saved us. How weird is it to say that? Very weird, but as I say, in crypto, anything can happen. Brizology, again, I'm making you a star here. Oh, hang on. You're, you're commenting on someone else, so it doesn't make sense. Ash, how are you, brother? Uh, enough kangaroos to survive for <laughs> a million years. Yeah, look, but here's the thing. How do you get a roo? What do you need? And I won't say the word, but what is the tool you need to take down a roo? There's a lot of them in America and not as many in Australia. Unless you've got one of those tools to take down a roo, very hard to get. But if you can get one, they're very good indeed. A lot of meat in a, in a roo. And um, quick story time. If you ever do kill an animal and you need to cut it up to eat and you're not sure how to do it, if you don't know how to butcher an animal, just stick with the legs. Because if you accidentally pierce the guts, especially the small or large intestine, and you contaminate the meat, you run a very high risk of making yourself very, very sick. So unless you know how to butcher an animal, uh, j just stick to the legs. That's the safe because there's nothing that can really go wrong there. And if you can get a leg off a kangaroo, there's a lot of good meat there. A lot. You would be amazed how much meat there is on one leg of one kangaroo. Random stuff we talk about. Troy, he says, what do you think about the price of BTC? How much more can we go down? Okay, good question. So let's do some TA. So um, hang on, before I get to TA, let me just finish off what I was saying here with uh, coins going down, ApeCoin down 42.8%, Rweave down 41.3%, Near Protocol down 40.4%, Aave down 39.2%, Curve down, third Curve Dow down 39.1%, <laughs> Axie Infinity down 38.5%, Synthetics SNX down 37.7%, Ethereum POW, you're down 37.6%, Helium again. Remember I told you I said this is not not this time. I've I said this probably three months ago. Helium is a coin that I love, love the community, love the technology, love everything about the coin. It's not about me. It's about the market. I've said this coin will likely go to zero. It's gone down another 37.3%. Algorand down 37.3%. Evmos down 36.7%. Phantom FTM down 36.6%. The Graph down 36.5%. Mana Decentraland 36.2%. Lido down 36.1%. The sandbox bit happening in the metaverse here, my crypto brothers and sisters. You're down 35.1%. Godzilla down 34.1%. Avalanche down 34.1%. Flow 33.7%. Quant 33.1%. Thorchain 32.9%. White Bit Token WBT. I'm worried about this one. You're down 32.5%. I could go on. It's just it's a bloodbath. Dogecoin down 30%. Tezos down 28%. XRP down. XRP, man. You're down 26.9%. For the XRP army out there, this is a good buying opportunity if you believe in this coin. Down a third pretty much over the last week. After all you've been through, you nearly made that 50 cent mark and now you're at 35 cent. So, Chainlink down 26.9%. Zcash, a privacy coin, down 26.5%. Bloodbath, Bloodbath. Shiba Inu down 24%. Look, these are all big names. Terra Luna Classic, oh my God. Still here. You can get a Terra Luna Classic for 0 0.00001 of a dollar. Lido staked Ether down 24%, rather. Ethereum down 23.5%. That's, that's a good buy there. That's a good, I, I think, I'm putting it out there. I think Ethereum is grossly underpriced. I think that is a $6,000 coin right there. And the reason why you're seeing it at $1,200 is because everything that's happening around us. In fact, I think Ethereum is a $10,000 coin. It's, it's now deflationary. Its supply is deflationary. There's more people building on it. The layer two solutions are getting better. I, I did buy a lot of Ethereum in this dip. Yes, I did. And I'm very happy with my buy. See ETH down 23%. Ethereum Classic 23.8%. 3%. Chillers, 23%. I could just go on. Look at Cardano down 21%. Wrapped Bitcoin down 21%. Bitcoin. So Bitcoin dropped 21.4% through all of this mess. 
Polygon Matic, which I scooped up a lot of, you also went down 20 or 21.2%. Look, these are all big coins. I mean, what do I see? If you're looking through the wrong paradigm, you're like, oh my God, the world's falling down. The sky's falling down. I'm like, man, everything's on sale. And I'm I'm not just saying that. I, I'm saying it because I genuinely believe it. Nothing's broken in the background. Everything is moving forward. People are still developing. If you look outside the news of this mess, everything's charged. It's business as usual. This is BAU. We are cracking on. Everything's moving forward. You've just had an, a great opportunity to scoop up some cheap crypto. Litecoin only down 16.3%. XCN, someone spoke about this finally, down 9.4%. These are all big coins. And look, this is how big the, the smash was this week. Everything was kind of in double digits as the biggest losers. Then we had a few single digits and then we're into the stable coins. So what an exciting week. For, through prices, this is an incredible week. Now, Troy, on to your question about Bitcoin. Does this chart make sense to you? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll clean it up here. Let's get rid of this. Um, let's use, let, let me get rid of this. So, so what you're looking at the moment, in case you're wondering what all these squiggly lines are, first of all, I'll clean it up So, and I'll make it simpler. So we'll go to one daily candles. Okay, and then the percentage movements, the orange line is hex. The aqua line is Ethereum. The purple line is is BNB, but we need to actually start cleaning this up a bit and we'll just talk about Bitcoin versus Tether so we can actually see what's happening. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so why, why today is quite sad, well, this week is quite sad, is because this was the first time in 140 days, 145 days, that we broke below that line of support. You know, if you've been, I'll, let me just draw it up here for you. So I'll drop a horizontal ray, uh, a horizontal line. So I'll put it right here. Okay. So this red dotted line here, this was the eighteen and a half thousand dollar mark that we tested. I think eight times. Let, let's do it together. One. I'm going to count wicks. Okay. I'll do that as one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight. So including wicks, not just bodies, we tested that line of eighteen and a half thousand dollars eight times. That is unbelievable. And I'm like, how can it drop below? Now, of course, anything can happen, but this mess made it drop below. And it's the first time we've dropped below the eighteen and a half. Let's go back. When when was the last time we were at eighteen and a half thousand dollars? Let's go all the way back. Okay, here, geez, God, look how far back we're going. So the last time we dropped below eighteen and a half thousand dollars plus or minus five percent, and including Wix, was December two thousand and twenty. That's how long we've been above this line, and that's how big this event is. It's the first time in essentially two years, nearly three years. So all of twenty, all of twenty twenty one all of 22 nearly because we're nearly at the end of the year because it's November. So for the better part of three years, this is the first time in three years that we've dropped below $18,500. And before we dropped below $18,500, you can see this line of support, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times we tested it. But look what's happening, my crypto brothers and sisters, as I zoom in here, here for you, drag it across. Okay. Ronnie, if you're still with me, what do we call this? What's that called? Who can tell me what that's called? Scrolling down. Scrolling down. BMA. It would be awesome if Adam bought a huge amount of hex right now. <laughs> I love you, hexagons. You hexagons. Craig K, I'm now bulletproof on the verge of stupidity. <laughs> Cheers, bro. <laughs> okay, Ronnie's got it. Okay. Thank you, Ronnie. It's a flag. Okay. Ronnie, you know I'm going to ask, what type of flag is it? Okay, a bit of TA here. Uh, and, and whilst you're figuring that out, it's a good question up here. So free up minds has said, hey, Adam, what do you think about BNB? It's not even down 50% from all-time high. 
in that case, it is doing better than BTs. BTC, that doesn't make sense. Um, look, the, the truth is, I, I say, hang on, Bitcoin, it took a big hit. Some old coins didn't, and BNB is one of them. I released a survey. So let's just look at my survey that I released here. Because it's important, because I asked you, this will help answer that question. So the survey said, who do, you th who do you blame most for this crypto crash saga mess? And I gave four options. I said, Sam bankrupt fraud, CZ, banks or governments or other. Now, overwhelmingly at 64.7%, most people blamed FTX and the CEO, SBF. But 6.7%, which was the lowest response, blamed CZ. And I understand why they blame CZ but for reasons that I outlined at the beginning of this video. And if you look at the Mark Moss video and the Coffee Zilla, Coffee Zilla video, that will give you more background why CZ, he definitely played a part. In my opinion, just my opinion, CZ definitely played a part in this mess. But he's not to blame for it. Why? Because he wasn't operating in market failure. Sam bankrupt fraud was. He was operating in market failure. And the other thing is, as I mentioned at the beginning of the first video before we dropped out, was that allegedly, allegedly, Sam messed with CZ's kids. And if you mess with a good father's kids, be very, very careful. Putting it out there, if you ever mess with Dino, I'll stop myself because I'm on camera. But the, my point is, CZ, the moves that he made did help undo his major competitor. However, it would have happened anyway. It would have happened anyway because it was an opera was operating in market failure. This would have happened. CZ just made it bigger, faster, harder, and more public. So back to your question. Why why didn't Binance drop so far? Because it's a good product. It, it, it is, I've been saying it for about two or three years now. Binance is a brilliant product. It, it's got its liquidity, it's got its backing, it's got a, well, from what I can tell where, where I'm sitting, a CEO who's operating with integrity. And I can even give an example of this. Do you remember, is about two or three years ago, Binance did have a trouble. It had a hack or something where money was lost. And CZ, the CEO of Binance, he came forward and said, it's our fault. I accept full responsibility. Here's your money back. And he literally took money out of his digital pocket and he gave it back to his people. Now that is absolute integrity. First of all, it shows he's got, he's liquid. He's got enough money. He's not, you know, Sam Bankman fried has got nothing. He's broke. And you might say, well, he's got a billion dollars. That means nothing when you owe people billions of dollars. The same thing happened with Celsius. Celsius still had like three or $4 billion in holdings, but that means nothing when you owe like, hundred billion dollars i can't remember how much i owe, but the, the delta was massive but when cz years ago in his early days and remember cz and binance has been around longer much longer than ftx way longer and when he at pretty much this stage early in his crypto journey when he had an accident something i can't remember what happened it was like i think there was a hack and a lot of these users lost their money he, he paid out of his own pocket and reimbursed every single satoshi so there's a lot of trust around binance it's been around for a long time there's a reason why it's the biggest trading platform in the world and ultimately binance had no exposure to this now they did they had half a billion dollars worth of ftt tokens but they sold them before this mess and where cz could be held li not liable responsible mm, i don't know when he sold when he dumped his position he did it publicly he basically said we just dumped 522, I think it's $522 million worth of BTT. It's about half a billion dollars worth of BTT. Now, on one hand, you could say CZ bad because he spooked the market and he made it, it all happen. But on the other hand, you could say, well, hang on, he was he's a public figure. He's the CEO of the biggest Binance, of the biggest platform. And he told everyone what he was doing. And if you're following this guy, as you might follow Buffett, as an example, in the for a trad trader, traditional trader and a CEO of a big entity, you might've followed his lead and you would have been okay. So again, 
it would have collapsed. FTX would have collapsed anyway. Absolutely. But CZ, in my opinion, and if you look at how it all played out, he helped it happen faster, sooner, and bigger than what was inevitable. Is that good or bad? I'll leave that up to you. Long rant to say the reason why it didn't crash is because it's a good product. And it, it wasn't exposed to this. It was not exposed. Okay, moving on. Back to my TA. Got one there, this one here. Some would call that a bear flag. If it goes the other way, it could be a bull flag. So at the moment, I want to get a little bit more granular here. Let me just remove my squiggles here. I'm worried that we're going to... Okay, so now let's do a little bit more TA. Ronnie, are you listening? <laughs> I'll pick on Ronnie. We love Ronnie. If you haven't worked with Ronnie yet, he's in the comments. He always sends me good pieces of information. And if you ever want some good insight, go to Uncle Ronnie. Okay, Ronnie, now that I've just talked you up, tell me what this is and tell me what you can see. I'm going to go to bodies, not wicks. Okay. Ronnie says, yes, boss. Ash has just said $10 billion is a small price to pay to remove the devil SBF. I, I agree. It was going to happen anyway, my crypto brothers and sisters. This was going to happen. It had to happen. He was operating a market. For, just the same as fiat's going to collapse. I'm telling you right now, when, when the banks collapse and you're like, oh my God, how did this happen? I say it had to happen. Fiat is fake. Anything that operates in market failure will fail. Now, how fast it fails, that's a different story. But it, anything that operates in market failure will fail. Okay, Ronnie, I need an answer from you. Chris Bannon, Adam said, oh, sorry, Brisk Cannon says, Adam, are you across the FTX platform hack that is rumored to be an inside job, SBF FTX developers, siphoning the remaining coins on the platform through to mix the dApps? Look, uh, Brisk, I'm not across that. I could say it would happen. It could happen. But the reason why I don't think it would happen, hang on, it could happen. But I don't think it is happening because, let's face it, all eyes are on this plan. They're about to have federal investigators going there. I mean, imagine you're in a bank, you're a bank teller, you've got access to all this bank, and you know there's like 3,000 FBI agents and a globe, global media giant looking at you. Are you going to steal any money from that drawer? <laughs> I wouldn't. And even if you siphon the funds, where are you going to put it? I know you've put it through these mixes, but eventually... So I taught the AFP the other uh, a couple of months ago, the Australian Federal Police. I gave a crypto uh, lecture to uh, investigators and law enforcement officers. It's pretty good, actually. I was quite honored to, to do it. And I was really talking about, look, we, we can track crypto all the way, with the exception of privacy coins. We can track it all the way to the on and off ramp. And there's one person in the audience who's like, you're all... How do, we, how do we find where the money gets when it's off the exchange? I'm like, well, that's over to you, Mr. Policeman. You know, I'm I'm giving you what you need to get right to the doorstep of when we get to the on and off ramp. So even if you use mixes, right, even if you sort of get this money all the way through and then you go out and you buy a Lambo, well, ultimately, when it's your government who says, hey, Jono, where'd you get the Lambo? Oh, uh, crypto. Okay, where'd you get the crypto? Oh, uh, busted. So that's the issue with all of this mixing and everything. When you get it off the ramp, off the crypto land, you, you've got to you've got to account for it. That's why the tax office in every jurisdiction is so powerful, because they're going to say, "Where did you get the car? Where did you get the house? Where did you get the Louis Vuitton crap that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars?" That's what auditors do. And if you can't prove where you got that money from, well, first of all, it's tax evasion. But if you've been fraudulent in your tax reports, then it's tax fraud. And if you've got that money illegally, then it's some type of criminal behavior. So, you, so you're screwed. You are absolutely screwed, which is why I'm always encouraging you. Do your taxes. Claim everything. Every dollar you get, half is going to the tax man. That's the everything I buy because I'm in the top tax bracket. Yay me. So for my sins, I get to pay pretty much 50% of everything I earn to the tax man. You're welcome, Australia. And meanwhile, they, they're like, oh, the tax are rich. I'm like, how much do you want? I, I'm, I'm giving you so much. Give us more. Okay. Let's reward those who work the hardest and give the most. Okay. 
So I accept this, but this is the paradigm I have now. Every time I go to the shop, which is as rare as possible because I hate going there because as soon as I'm there, you start buying. If you want to save money, don't go to a shop. Just stay home and don't go online shopping. But every time I see something like, I don't know, a bottle of water, and this bottle of water is a dollar, I'm like, no, it's $2. Why? Because I had to earn $2 to get one because half of it goes to the tax man. And once you actually sort of start getting that in your mind, it's like, oh, everything's 100% more expensive. Yeah, it is. When you're in the top tax bracket, you're paying 50 cents on the dollar to the tax man, which means everything that you buy, you need twice as much. So think about it. If you're in the lowest tax bracket and you think, oh, the rich are so evil, just imagine you had worked really hard. You went to university. You paid off all your debt. You worked really hard. You served. You did everything that you were supposed to do. And now the reward for you for doing all of that is that you don't have to pay double for everything. That's essentially what happens when you're in the top tax bracket. When you're in the lowest tax bracket, that doesn't happen. First of all, you get a massive tax-free threshold comparative to your overall income, but then you're paying a lower bracket in itself. So instead of everything being double when you buy it, it's like 20% more expensive. But even if you're in that lower tax bracket, you must be thinking, hey, I'm actually paying 20% more than what the ticket price is. And it's worse in America because in America, not worse, it's just a different... When I lived in America, you don't include the tax, like the, it's a VAT, a value-added tax or a GST, a goods and service tax, on the price, on the ticket. But in Australia, by law, you have to do it. So if it's on the shelf for a dollar, you can't then go to the checkout chicken. It becomes a dollar ten. That's illegal. It has to be incorporated in the price on the shelf. But in America, it's not that way. You buy something and it's like a dollar, and then when you go to the checkout, they say it's a dollar eight. And I got burnt with that heat when I when I lived in America. I'm like, no, no, it was a dollar. And like, yeah, tax. And I'm like, huh? So fun fact for you there. Okay, Ronnie, you said you've got nothing. I'll help you out. <laughs> Who can tell me what we're looking at? Oh, I like that JBA. JBA has just said, not just twice as much, add in fuel and time. Beautiful JBA. Well said. So when I go to the shop, it's not just double for what I buy. It's opportunity cost. So when I drive to the shop, I could be making a video for you or doing research or doing trading. And I could have not been burning fuel or wearing out tires or wearing out my car. Really good point there, JBA. Okay, LTR. Hey, Leroy. I know who you are, brother. Good to see you. Um, so this is a wedge that's forming. I would argue it is a descending wedge. But if we change this here, I don't think it's a symmetric wedge. But if I move this to here, because this is where it gets difficult time scales. See how that's a descending wedge? So technically, if you're looking at TA, it's going to break out because we've got compression. Now, with a descending wedge with compression, which way is it going to break? Put it out there, people. Go on, have a go. Put it in the comments. Which way is it going to break? You've got a descending wedge with compression. Which way is it going to break? Whilst you decide, Hex Pulsier says, hi, Adam. He says, I'm paying 20% on VAT, 20% VAT on a company. I can't even claim VAT back on and am the high tax bracket. But I'm, but fortunately in the UK, it's 20% gains only on crypto. So I feel you, brother. Oh, you only pay 20% gains in the UK. We pay gains as if it was just income. It's horrible. So it's... Uh, unless, hang on, that's not true. If I sell it after owning it for 12 months, then I only pay tax on half of those gains. So if I sell it under 12 months, I pay tax on all of the gains. If I sell it after 12 months, I pay tax on half the gains. But then that becomes my income. So I pay tax on the gain. Then I pay tax on the income. And then when I go to the shop, I pay tax on the value added tax of the GST. It's just endless tax. And the same with fuel. You know, fuel, when you buy fuel, you've got the, the tax that you're paying it like a GST, but you're paying tax upon tax because there's a fuel excise tax on it that government's put on it just automatically. And then you pay tax on top of that tax. It's just, oh no, let's not talk about it. Okay, Ronnie says down. Luke Ross, 14K, which says down. Julie says down. Ash says up. Rough Bet says up. Okay, uh, G Gen tax 
<laughs> Degenerate. Uh, first of all, cool name, Degenerate. Uh, taxathon Stokesy, yeah. It's, it's a bloody taxathon. The tax is coming out in the wazoo. Okay, to answer this TA here, the technical say is going to break down. It's going to break down because you have a descending wedge. Therefore, it will break down. But let me just, I'll take it, let's get more granular. And, and look, there you are. See, as soon as I went, look at that. All right, I, I just proved my point. So we, before we were looking at four-hour candles. So here's a four-hour candle. And there you can see the wedge. But then if you break it down to one hour, you get more granular. And you can see there's your breakdown. So because I, I could have done the technicals like that. See that? That's all. This is where you got to play with this yourself, my crypto brothers and sisters. Now, remember, you know that I'm not big on technicals because... Yes, I lean on them, but don't fall in love with them. Because if you were only looking at technicals, this this should be tracking up. But we had we had a bloody FTX saga in crypto. Anything can happen. Leroy says we're going down to fifteen thousand nine hundred sixty. Now that's a man I respect, Leroy. He's giving us a prediction to an actual price point. He's not saying up or down. He's giving us a price point. Leroy, give us a plus or minus X percent. What's your what's your percentage error margin? I'll give you five percent, but if you want to narrow it down further, I'll accept that. Looking at your comments, any comments that I should read for you? Benny O. Benny O says, more than allowed to say, I'm so grateful for your word of wisdom. Keep it up from one of your many loyal listeners. Thank you, Benny. And from memory, you're a new father. I think. I've got a lot of people I talk to, but if that's true, I, I, there's no last name, so I'm not exposing anything here. Congratulations to you and your lovely wife. I'm very happy for you having a baby. And if she's listening right now, well done, Mrs. Benny O. Hope you're getting enough sleep, and I'm very happy for you. And I love having your partner in the crypto land. Benny O. Hi, Adam. The more I listen to you, the more I'm learning to read between the lines with your military background and your degree qualifications. I'm of the opinion that you know. Well, thank you, Benny. Um, everyone thinks they know. I think I know. Uh, the only way I can back up what I know is I've got 560 videos and five years of documented evidence of what I've said on camera that's still out there for you to see so I can back up what I've said. And I appreciate that comment. Finbear. Finbear says, I'm lucky to have been burnt in 2017, so I knew not to give my crypto away this cycle. All of the influence, influencers should have known better. Finbear, you're absolutely right. So we all got burnt in 2017. And if you weren't in 2017, it's now your turn to be burnt now. You've got your battle scars. You've earned the fortunes that are coming your way. You've made it through. Hopefully you've made it through this. You're still with me now. It's okay. Losing is part of the game. It is part of the game. Okay, we're going to have to wrap up soon because I've been ranting away too long. Oh, Hemi Raw. Hang on, let me get Hemi Raw. Hey, Adam, how are you, bro? I hope all is well. Hemi, this is everyone. This is my future bodyguard. Hemi, I looked at your YouTube channel. Uh, Hemi, if you want to share your YouTube channel now, I'll, I'll plug it for you because he's got some cool dogs. Panda, I love your Roddy. And your other dog, which is a, a bigger version of my Dino. Great videos. Uh, Hemi, if you want people to go to your channel, just put the link in the comments below and I'll, and I'll allow it to go out to the cryptoverse. Uh, good bloke here. Hemi, good to see you. Michelle Lemina. 10,000 called Richard the King. She's saying that Bitcoin's going to 10,000. Look, it could do Michelle, but remember, I'm a fan of Richard, but I'm going to call a spade a spade. He was going to make a $100,000 bet. I believe it was $100,000, but it was certainly a bet with Alex Saunders last year that Bitcoin was going to $10,000 last december and it did not do that last december it was nowhere near that so could it go to 10 grand possibly but his call was december last year i'm a fan of richard but i'm keeping it all real got to keep it real <laughs> degenerate rant on adam thank you brother i appreciate that v ranger i have twenty five thousand dollars of btc and eth buy orders spread across spread out from here to be to 10k btc but i am but am i mad trying up my dc tying up my dca fund good question so v ranger has asked should he just keep those market orders in waiting for the ten thousand dollar 
Bitcoin that may or may not come? Or should he put his money in dollar cost averaging? Okay, so I can answer this question, noting I'm not a financial advisor or planner, but I can tell you mathematically and statistically, dollar cost averaging is the safest way. Because right now you've got some cheap Bitcoin and you go, oh, it's going to go to 10 grand. And if it doesn't, you've just missed out on fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 Bitcoin. Now you might say, but what if it does? It could do, it could, but if you dollar cost average, you, you're going to get it at some of it anyway. So if you buy it all now, you're not going to get that cheaper stuff, but you could miss out on more expensive stuff. But if you hold those market orders waiting, I'm, I'm waiting for it to drop to this. What if it never drops? So everyone's got an opinion. I'll tell you right now, no one knows. No one knows. So ultimately, mathematically, statistically, realistically, dollar cost averaging is proven, not just in Bitcoin, across all markets. Dollar cost averaging is proven to be the safest and most effective way to get a sound return in anything you're investing in, provided it goes up, of course. So just over to you with that one. Luke Ross, 10 to 12K also lines up with the descending triangle where uh, we were, where, correction, triangle we were in. Think RH will be close to right with this one. Yeah. If you look at the descending triangle, just be careful. Like, because as I said, I'm, I'm not saying it's not going to 10 or 12 grand. I'm just saying they've been saying that forever. And even in the last cycle, when they said it's going to, and now I'm going back five years, it's going to three grand. It's going to three. It didn't. It, it didn't go back to three grand. So it could, it, it might, it may not. Ultimately, it's your call. It's your money. You do your TA. Listen to opposing views to my, please, whatever I say, find something the opposite. You know, do your own research. That's one way of doing your research. Get op opposing opinions. Don't fall into an echo chamber. Don't fall into a chamber that just says, Shiba Inu, yay, hear the opposite. And, and vice versa, if you Shiba Inu, boo, hear the opposite, hear both sides of it. And then get more sides and more sides because it's not like a two-sided object. It's like a hexagon or an octagon. There's, there's multiple sides to it. So try and find them all. Uh, moving further on. Annihilator. I like how you've written that Annihilator. BTC didn't drop that far over the week end with all the bearish across the world and the bias to the downside. Maybe one last week down before the bounce catch off, catching retail off guard. Annihilator, I think you've described that perfectly. Bitcoin wasn't hit that hard. It really wasn't. Now, you might say, well, hang on a second, 20% in a week. It's crypto, people. This is crypto. W welcome to the crypto land. This, this is not normal. Now, don't forget, we can get 100% in a week. Oh, don't be stupid. Of course we can. We've done it before. We've had 200% in two days. Would that happen with Bitcoin now? I think it's a lot harder. Could it happen with the altcoins? Hell yes, absolutely. <laughs> you can get 200% in an afternoon. This is crypto. So 20% back in a week, if it was traditional financial markets, yes, we'd be freaking out. But it's crypto, therefore anything can happen. I think some of you are talking about cricket out there. Oh, yeah. Did, did they play cricket today? I think it was going to rain out because of... If it was rained out, then it was going to be a draw. Hemi Raw. Oh, uh, he says, Oh, bro, thank you so much, mate. Much appreciated. I hope Dino Dog and Doby are doing well as always. Yes, they are. Dino was terrified today, though. Big thunderstorm where I live. Y you know, dogs are funny. Dino, when, when I vacuum, Dino loves the vacuum. He'll chase it and run around with it. But Doby the Doberman, she'll freak out and run away and hide. Then when there's thunder, so it was like three o'clock this morning, there was like this massive kaboom thunder. <laughs> and poor old Dino, he sleeps next to me and he's like almost trying to get into bed with me. He's freaking out. And I go out to check on Doby and Doby's just like on her back, legs up, snoring her head off, does not care about the thunder at all. So it's weird how dogs can be terrified of one thing and totally cool with another. Dobie is terrified of vacuum cleaners, doesn't care about thunder. Dino loves vacuum cleaners and is terrified of thunder. Oh, good question, Neil. Has anyone checked Michael Saylor how he's doing? Yeah, look, I, I saw a FUD video recently where they're saying that Michael Saylor is selling out of everything. Just be careful with that. You know, 
he's he's not selling out of his position, but I'll tell you what, he would be under a lot of pressure. If you think you're doing it tough, my crypto brothers and sisters, imagine what Michael Saylor is going through. Soy Monga, Uncle Adam, Trust Wallet. Uh, yeah, we were talking about that before, Soy. Um, Trust Wallet up by 40% today. Very good. James, a vintage. Before you sign off, Adam, what would be, not financial advice, the top five coins you'd buy into now? Okay, James, that's a good question. I am going to answer that question. So this is not financial advice. I am not telling you where to put your money. But I will say these are the coins that I have been buying. I can say that. I'm not saying you should buy it. I'm being uh, quite over the top here because I have to because I don't want to get sued. And I'm, I'll be very clear. I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. I am not telling you what to do with your money. I'm telling you what I did with my money. That doesn't mean you do this with your money. I'm saying what I did with my money. I'm pretty sure legally I'm allowed to say that. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I bought or what I am buying. Oh, you know what we haven't done? So we'll just go down just quickly before I... <laughs> I actually haven't gone down the crypto rankings. Let's just do the top 10. I'll go over to Nomics for this because one of you asked before. Okay, I'll refresh the page because everything's moving quickly. Just the top 20. Bitcoin 1, Ethereum 2, Tether 3, Binance Coin 4. So through all of this, Binance Coin is still in the top four. USD Coin 5, Binance USD 6. That's three stable coins in the top six. XRP 7, Dogecoin 8, Cardano 9, Matic at 10, Polygon at 11, Liquid Staked Ether at 12, Dai at 13, Shiba Inu 14, Solana down two positions to 15, Tron, the old Tron, and geez, hasn't Justin Sun been interesting in this whole saga? I won't talk about him. Position 16, Hex climbing up to position 17, well done, holding the 3.3 cent mark, OKX utility token at 18, Litecoin at 19, Wrapped Bitcoin at 20, and just for luck and fun, Avalanche at 21. Now, to answer your question, Jimmy boy. These are the coins I'm buying. First of all, who can guess what the, f Hey, Chris Rayleigh. Stop plugging that coin. I don't know if you're real. I think you're real, but you keep asking about this coin. Just yeah, don't plug coins, bro. Hang on. I'm just going to remove it. Mm. No, I'm not going to block you. Cause I, I think you're real. Okay. What is the coins that I'm buying? Can anyone guess? What's the first one? Come on. What's the first one I'm buying? Anyone? Anyone? Number one. Yes. Okay, Michael or Michelle, sorry. You've got the first one. One is Ethereum. Next one. Shen. I know Hex isn't actually one of them I'm buying at the moment. Yes, Reef Surfing and Black Raven, Bitcoin. So one is Ethereum, two is Bitcoin. That's a given. What else am I buying? <laughs> Trevor said FTT. I love it. <laughs> you know, who's buying FTT? Oh, Trev, you bloody legend. JBA Ada Striker said Ada. No, uh, Julie, you've got it. Yes, Binance. KR2, yes, Matic, and BNB. That's it. Thank you. So you got it right. So I am buying more than that, but you've asked for five, James. So there's the five. Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Matic. What was the last one? Someone said XRP. I, you know, I, I am actually buying some ADA as well, just, just because ADA is still doing its thing. I, the issue with Cardano is this, is that Ethereum is really getting a big lead. Now, but don't get me wrong. I love Cardano, huge fan of it, but it's not about me. It's about the market. And when you've got Polygon and Ethereum and Binance getting a big lead, Bitcoin's not in the run. It's doing its own thing. Some of my money is going into Cardano and yes, to you XRP army and to you Leroy, I did also buy a little bit of XRP, not much. It's not one of my big ones. And, and look, that's pretty much it. Oh, there, there was a, one other one. I, I actually did. You, you're going to hate it when I say this. I actually did buy a little bit of Solana. Why? Because it's it, it's it's one of the two. It's either all the way or not. Now, look, the reason why I haven't bought any Hex, in case you guys are wondering, is because 
I've already got a lot and I've already staked it and I've made my move on it. And, and I'm already in the Pulse ecosystem and the Pulse X and the liquid loan. So in case you're wondering, why isn't Adam buying more Hex? I'll tell you, because I've made my move in that ecosystem. I've got Hex, Pulse, Pulse X, liquid loans. And was there another one? I think that's it. So that's that's a big move. I've And I've made a big move in that ecosystem. So And nothing's happening. And like, well, it's going to happen. You don't know. You don't know. So once you've made a move, which I have, and I've made a serious move, that's a big move into a lot of coins around one kind of ecosystem. Yes, Pulse is different to Hex, but, you know, same founder, same community. But Liquid Loans is dependent on, on Pulse launching. And Pulsex could be doing its same thing, but it's not its own thing, but it hasn't launched yet. So I've made my move in that ecosystem and that's it. I'm done. Now, if it pumps, great. I've, I've made my move. I've made my profits. I've staked my hex. So I'm earning more hex anyway. There's other opportunities out there, my crypto brothers and sisters. I'm not turning my back on hex or that ecosystem. I'm just saying I've made my move and now there's other opportunities. Litecoin is arguably cheap at the moment but you've also got to look at some of these other coins that you know even dare i say dogecoin i've already got a lot of dogecoin but if dogecoin goes to a dollar which it could if twitter survives and if elon musk um, incorporates it into his platform you know th that's a 10x easily easily right there but i'm i feel more comfortable getting bitcoin ethereum bmb and matic and then spreading the remainder across something like Cardano, a little bit of XRP, um, some Solana, only because it's very well priced. And then go fishing, you know, way down. Like you might look at QNT, ApeCoin if it comes back up, Filecoin if it comes back up, some of the Metaverse, Decentraland. I mean, that's still a very good coin and the Sandbox. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's too volatile to tell. Clintron says Luna. Classic. <laughs> I've got some Algorand. Yeah, I do have some Algorand. Yeah, V Ranger has, he says, Ada has a weird dependability to it. Seems mad not to get a bit. I, I agree, V Ranger. Well said. Look, you're mad not to get a bit of it. I mean, because you can stake it right now. At the moment, I'm earning, I won't tell you how much I'm earning because I shouldn't reveal that, but I'm earning through staking enough Ethereum and Ada that I'm, I'm just building up. And same with Hex. So I've made my move in these coins and I'm just building up more and more of it. But why am I buying up way more Ethereum and Bitcoin than Hex? It's because I think Ethereum can easily, easily do a 6X, more likely do a 10X. And because it's paying me good staking rewards and I can move in and out of those positions quickly, why not? Uh, Neil Dennison has asked about Theta. Look, I, Theta's good. I made my move in Theta. I think it's well-priced at the moment. Possibly. Rough Bets has asked about Dot. The issue with Dot is nothing's really happening. It's been around for a while. It should have made its move by now. I can't see it getting bigger. I've got some Dot, but I'm not buying more. Uh, Cal has said, DYDX doing well. Everyone bailing. Sex at Kex's yeah, But the, the issue is, Cal, I wonder, I don't know Cal, but maybe it's done its run. Uh, Johnny H has said, are you concerned at all with CoinSpot? With every no, not at all. Um, now that, that's not to say don't take your coins off it. So, so the rule is take your coins off the exchanges. But the question is, are you concerned, concerned with coin spot? Not at all. Australia's biggest crypto platform, um, very open, very transparent. It has been audited. Uh, here's a good one to, to, um, back up coin spot. It approached an auditor, an independent auditor and said, we will pay you to audit us or can you audit us? And they publish it openly. So, you know, that's that's a good sign. That's what I'm talking about, standards. That's a standard that we should be saying to all the crypto platforms. We should say, all right, you go to an independent auditor and you pay, and you might say, well, that's a conflict of interest because you're paying them. Not at all. It's quite common for companies to pay for an auditor to come in. And that auditor, who's an independent auditor, they won't compromise their own brand by doing something dodgy. Yes, they can receive, I mean, you're not going to audit for free. They've got it's work. It's a lot of work. So it's quite fair for them to pay for an order to, to come in. And CoinSpot has done that. I would be, just in my opinion, I would be more concerned about, I won't say I'll get sued, but there's four big crypto platforms in Australia. 
And the one I'm least worried about is CoinSpot. Just my opinion. But if you've got your coins on there, take just take them off and put them in cold storage. Then you don't have to worry about it. When he says, I recall Michael Seiler saying that they are okay until BTC gets to around 8K. And if it does, they will need to put some more collateral, which they have. Okay, good point, Ronnie. So Michael Saylor has said that if Bitcoin gets to eight grand, then they're in a bit of trouble, but then they've got some more collateral that they can put in there. Hemi Raw says, I like CoinSpot. Me too, Hemi. Annihilator, I withdrew to Ledger from CoinSpot perfectly over the weekend. Yep, they haven't stopped any um, transfers or withdrawals they've introduced a credit card they've got an nft platform they're australian they've been around the longest they're the biggest it's not to say they couldn't go down but it could happen jba strike my ada to ledger doesn't work the guys at ledger say there is an issue at the moment not fixed others can but not mine um jba that's why i actually don't use ledger i use trezor i'm not saying ledger's bad i just i've got my reasons and for, if you're wondering what adam uses it's a trezor and that answers your question, Craig Patton. In my opinion, the two biggest ones are Ledger and Trezor. I use Trezor. Black Raven, you have the only balanced stance on Hex I've heard so far. Others are just hating on RH or outright shilling Hex. Thank you, Black Raven. I really appreciate that. I agree, Black Raven. Black Raven has said, I'm balanced with Hex. I, <laughs> I'm patting myself on the back. Absolutely, I am. I I'm balanced on pretty much all coins, even Bitcoin. Otherwise, I'd go all in. I'd sell all my property, all my cars. I'd liquidate all my superannuation, and I'd put it all on hex on Bitcoin. I haven't done that. Why? Because everything comes with risk. And when it comes to hex, yeah, just to all you good hexagons, remember, just look at both sides, and don't forget, just because you've bought hex doesn't mean you can't buy another coin. It, it's a you can buy more than one coin. It, it's not. It's not binary it's not like i have to be black or white no there's 50 shades of gray girls settle down uh, moving on michelle says must go walk dog goes thanks adam michelle i have to as well my crypto brothers and sisters thank you so much for joining me michelle thank you for reminding me to walk the doggos um i've had fun tonight i hope you have as well i hope you're feeling good i feel much better after talking to you thank you very much for your comments can you give us a like i appreciate it if you give us a like it's just a click i don't want your money but give me a click that really does help and if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It does help. And if you really want to give Uncle Adam a favor, share. And what I mean by that, share my channel with other people. That that would really help. Don't want your money, but uh, I, I will take your clicks. But thank you very much for the super chats from Troy. And I had one other for the camera fund. Uh, I realized it wasn't for the camera was the issue. The issue was bloody teams. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Safe diversification. I'm walking Dino and Dobie, and I'll talk to you next time.